Potential tropical cyclone six has formed in the Gulf of Mexico and is expected to become a hurricane as it moves northbound towards areas like Texas and Louisiana and is expected to quickly intensify over the next few days. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about this system, why it's becoming more concerning, what kind of impacts it could bring to the United States and when it'll be making landfall. We are going to begin with what's happening right now across the Gulf of Mexico. And this is what we're talking about right now with potential tropical cyclones. Cyclone 6. It does not yet have an organized center, but you'll notice there are a lot of thunderstorms blowing up right now. A lot of different vorticity maxima that are moving towards each other, and once that becomes more organized, we are expecting Tropical Storm Francine to be named sometime over the next 24 hours as this moves off to the north, eventually going in the direction of Texas and as well as Louisiana. Now, right now, it's not, again, super organized, but since it is in a very favorable environment with very low wind shear, in addition to that, not really much of any dry air and there's also very warm water temperatures this does have the potential to intensify rather quickly as it eventually moves to the north towards areas like texas and louisiana which is what we're going to be breaking down for you here over the next few minutes is how intense this could get and also where it's going to be heading now, the tropics are definitely heating up as we approach the peak of hurricane season which by the way is on september 10th overall we have three different areas that we're watching we have potential tropical cyclone six in the southwestern gulf of mexico and then we have two areas of development back out in the central Central Atlantic Ocean and notice that there are red and orange colors which is something we've not seen a whole lot of recently basically what that means is that there is a medium to high likelihood of there being a tropical cyclone that develops over the next seven days so we have to watch these two systems pretty closely because one could go towards the United States I still don't see this one being a big problem but we'll talk more about it here in just a few minutes the one that we're really gonna be focusing on though today is this potential tropical cyclone six in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico now this right here is something that you do not want to see during during this time of the year we have a very large cone of uncertainty to begin with and we also have the potential for this becoming a hurricane over the next few days now the latest outlook is that this is right now called potential tropical cyclone six not officially a named storm but it's expected to be named by as early as tomorrow morning if not sometime during tomorrow afternoon once it organizes a bit more notice the maximum sustained winds are already at 50 miles per hour it's actually you know pretty intense so far already as a potential tropical cyclone now as this moves to the north it is expected to gradually strengthen over the next 24 hours into a stronger tropical storm. And by Tuesday afternoon, this will be sitting just to the east of Texas. And then by Wednesday morning and eventually into Wednesday afternoon is when we could see rapid intensification occur with this particular tropical cyclone. Now, the reason why this is so important is because when we get rapid intensification, we can see tropical storms intensify very quickly to like hurricanes, category one, category two type level hurricanes. And so this is a very important thing thing that we have to watch for over the next 48 hours because if this does end up rapidly intensifying we could see this become a stronger hurricane right now it's forecasted to be a low-end cat one hurricane upon landfall somewhere in southeast texas or central or western louisiana but i would not be shocked if this got to a category two hurricane wouldn't even rule out something slightly higher than that with this sort of storm now the big thing that we have to watch for as well is that this doesn't even have that much time it's expected to make landfall sometime wednesday afternoon or evening or perhaps even in the overnight hours in that case you know we only have about 72 hours until landfall this definitely does not have a ton of time to rapidly intensify but it has enough time and this is a very favorable environment right now we have a very very hot gulf of mexico ocean waters it is boiling out there so it's very possible that this does rapidly intensify here's what we're looking at as we go into thursday this will eventually move inland as a tropical depression and weaken i do expect there to at least be some level of a tornado risk on wednesday across parts of louisiana and southern mississippi and then thursday that could move a little bit more inland but right now does not seem to be the biggest concern out of this right now. Here's another view of potential tropical cyclone six. And the reason why I'm showing you this in a closer view is because you'll notice there really isn't a whole lot of spin right now with this particular system. We don't really have anything organized quite yet, but there are a lot of, you know, really huge thunderstorms that are developing right around this. We had a large complex on the south side of the center. We also got a lot on the north side. So this is definitely going to start to organize, I think, over the next 24 hours. Once it becomes a bit more organized, we'll definitely know more about the track and intensity once it gets closer to land. Here are the spaghetti models, which give you an idea of where this tropical cyclone could go. And I'm going to be honest with you, Debbie was one of those systems that we had a lot more uncertainty with only three days out. In this case, it actually looks relatively certain on where this will be heading. It's likely to make landfall somewhere in southeast Texas or southwest Louisiana. I do think it has a much better shot at making landfall in Louisiana, in my opinion. And so right now, over the next couple of days, there's definitely a lot of uncertainty initially, but a lot of the models stay within the same area, at least making landfall 
landfall sometime late, late Wednesday night. I do want to point out that if this does take a more westerly track and you know goes more towards Texas, this will more than likely be a strong tropical storm upon landfall somewhere up here in the southeast Texas or southwest Louisiana region. If this stays more out to sea and stays in the Gulf of Mexico for a longer period of time, this is where I think the greatest chance would be for rapid intensification, and there would be a much higher chance of this becoming a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane upon landfall. Before we go into the future radar with this particular tropical storm that is developing, I did want to point out the intensity guidance from various computer models. Notice how a lot of the models are still in the tropical storm to low end category one hurricane range. I honestly don't feel like this is going to stay like this. I think a lot of the models are going to continue to uptrend over the next 24 hours. So by tomorrow morning, when we have our next video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, by the way, for the latest updates. I think that this will continue to go up, and I think that there's a pretty good chance that this will become a category one or category two hurricane hurricane upon landfall with how favorable the environment is right now in the Gulf of Mexico. Now I'm going to show you two different computer models for the future radar, both of which are deterministic models, one of which is the GFS, the next one being the European model. And the reason why I'm showing you these is I do think they do a good job of handling where this will go and when it'll make landfall. I also think they could do a good job with the impacts that could be dealt with this. But I think the biggest thing that we're going to be looking at here is the intensity. And overall, the GFS model does really go crazy with intensity. European model, in my opinion, is a little bit more realistic. So beginning with the GFS, GFS model for tomorrow afternoon. Notice how this is in the southwest gulf as a tropical storm. By Tuesday morning, this starts to move more to the north, but very slowly, just southeast of Texas as still a tropical storm, not really intensifying much. The GFS model, though, as we go into late Tuesday, has this rapidly intensifying just to the east of Texas. As long as this sits offshore, that's what the GFS model is indicating, that this could rapidly intensify. By Wednesday morning, look how quickly this intensifies. 964 millibars is a strong hurricane. We're talking category two, not even that far from a category three hurricane. This is by Wednesday evening. It starts to move in the direction of Louisiana at 957 millibars and then makes landfall going into late Wednesday night as a strong hurricane, at least a category two, if not close to a category three, and then moves inland as we go into Thursday with a tornado threat existing in Alabama. Now, I do think the big story with this one will be the wind and the intensity near landfall, and I do think storm surge will be a big thing as well. I don't think flooding is going to be a major concern, but I think it will be a problem, especially in Louisiana where we could see several inches and maybe even up to a foot of rain dump in those areas. Now, granted, that is a high-end scenario. That is basically indicating that we could see one of the worst-case scenarios with this sort of environment being somewhere around a Category 2 or low-end Cat 3 hurricane. I think the European model, a little bit more realistic for right now. This is what it indicates. It indicates some intensification as we go into Tuesday afternoon. But notice how it delays intensification compared to the GFS. By Tuesday afternoon, this is only a, you know, a low-end tropical storm, but it eventually starts to intensify as it moves north North as we go into Wednesday afternoon, approaching Louisiana, and then eventually making landfall thir really early Thursday morning or very late Wednesday night in Louisiana as at least a Category 1 hurricane, if not a low-end Category 2 hurricane. I think this scenario a lot more realistic in my opinion. I think the impacts would be the same with storm surge, flooding rains, and perhaps even a few tornadoes being a possibility and also high winds. But I think overall the European model a bit more realistic right now, but I, I do think over the next 12 to 24 hours will paint a much clearer picture on how intense this could get because if it does not intensify much by tomorrow like afternoon I think this will probably just end up being a strong tropical storm low end hurricane I think if it starts to intensify though quicker like the GFS model indicating right now I think this could very easily get to a category two hurricane so very very important to be watching this if you're right along the Texas or Louisiana coastline I still think the higher likelihood right now is that this will make landfall in Louisiana the last thing I wanted to show you is that the other two tropical waves out in the central Atlantic Ocean or in the main development region still indicating very minimal development really over the next couple of days, but long term they are indicating that we could see a hurricane develop out here in the central Atlantic Ocean. Currently does not look like something that I'm too concerned about in the United States. That first one that was in the red, the higher likelihood of developing, still shows signs of just being a slow gradual development, perhaps becoming a hurricane at some point or a tropical storm, but low chances of that for right now. The one behind it that's back over here further to the east has more of an indication of being just a fish storm at this point, moving to the north, becoming more than likely at least a tropical storm, but if not a hurricane. And then after that, it looks like it'll be basically just out to sea, not impacting the United States. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.